the Lord, everybody. Amen. We want to thank you for welcoming us into your homes on this morning, this afternoon, this Saturday afternoon. Amen. We want to open up our service with a, a scripture and a word of prayer. I'll be coming from Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify us unto himself, a peculiar people, zealous for, the, the, for good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Amen. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Hallelujah. And if you will bow your heads where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor and we give you glory because you are truly worthy to be praised, God. God, we just thank you for allowing us to be able to come to you before your people, God. To give a word from you, Lord. Lord, we ask that the people of God would hear the word that you have for us today, God. Lord, we ask that you bless them that are listening. We thank you for the opportunity to share this ministry on social media, God. We don't take this time lightly, God, and because you are truly worthy to be praised, God. Hallelujah. We ask that you bless the sick, God, them that would like to be able to see this ministry, God. We ask that you open the door so that they will be able to share just as we have, God. Now, we ask that you bless anyone that is bereaved this morning, God. We know that there are many that have lost loved ones, God, but we know that you are a very present help in the time of trouble, God. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this ministry, God. We thank you for our apostle, God. And as he gives the word, God, just continue to bless him, God. Hallelujah. Just bless him, God. Hallelujah. That you can use him so that some soul may be saved. Someone will be delivered. Somebody will be set free from the bondage of sin, God. God, we love you. We give ourselves to you right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the Lion of Judah. He reigns and he rules. Hallelujah. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Great I Am. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
us some praise. Hallelujah. Come on and join me in praising him. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We realize where our help comes from. The word of God says our help comes from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. We're so excited that you have joined us this afternoon for our drive-through for your breakthrough service right here at the beautiful Praise and Worship Center in Pulaski, Illinois. God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. To all of my friends in East Africa, I say salamu yingi, many greetings, hallelujah, and we say buona asafiwe. For those of you who don't know, it is a simple Swahili expression that means praise the Lord. And we love praising our God. When it was God who woke us this morning, the songwriter said, and started us on our way. And I'm just excited to be here to share a little bit with you this afternoon. So go ahead and get your family gathered together around your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, whatever it is that you're watching this. Those of you who are watching by YouTube, God bless you. All of the Facebook crowd, God bless you. We thank God for each and every one of you. Do us a favor. Go ahead and text somebody, call somebody, and tell them to join us. We are live right here at the Praise and Worship Center. Our physical location is 371 Chestnut, Pulaski, Illinois, 62976. You can reach us by our postal address if you'd like to drop us a line. Uh, praise the Lord, and we would love to hear from you. And by the way, like us, tag us on Facebook. Please follow us. Uh, we're here just to be a blessing to you. You can reach us at our mailing address, Post Office Box 226, Pulaski, Illinois, 62976. That's St. John Praise and Worship Center Ministries, P.O. Box 226, Pulaski, Illinois, 62976. You can also reach us by email. Our email address, sjpwc371 at gmail.com. sjpwc371 at gmail.com. Well, if you'd like to be a blessing to our ministry and help us to further the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we do reach around the world. We have ministries uh, in East Africa, uh, notably in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. And we thank God for the many opportunities that we've had to go there on crusade and also to conduct leadership seminars. And, and it's interesting to me that when we go to be a blessing to them, we end up being even blessed the more. Uh, what we used to call third world countries, uh, I see now there are many things that's quite similar. Uh, not being able to get where you want to go, when you want to go. That's all part of our experience right now. But if you would like to make a financial contribution, you can do it in three ways. Number one, you can mail it. Make the check of money order payable to St. John Praise and Worship Center Ministries. Please designate in the memo section how you would like that money to be distributed. We have a variety of ministries within this ministry, and we are a ministry of integrity. We, we divert those funds exactly the way you request them to be spent and utilized. So you can uh, mail it to us. Again, our mailing address is P.O. Box 226, Pulaski, Illinois, 62976. Well, you can also text to give. Text to give. Write the word give. Text it, the number, 618 414 3434. That's text, give, followed by the dollar amount. Has to be a minimum of $10, and you'll get a dialogue box asking how you want that money to be allocated as well. That number, 618 414 3434. And then finally, you can drop it off at the Praise and Worship Center. Officers will be here at the physical location Sunday between the hours of 11 and 12. So if you're in the area, you just want to drop by, drop it off. And we do maintain social distancing protocols. And uh, all you have to do is just come on by. And we'll be glad to receive your offering, your tithe, your donation. Again, we will, we will allocate funds the way you direct us to do so. Our physical address, one more time, is 371 Chestnut, Pulaski, Illinois. 
62976. Well, God bless you. Come on and grab your Bibles. There is a word from the Lord, and you are going to be blessed this Saturday. Drive through for your breakthrough. We're here just to make sure you get your breakthrough in the midst of it all. I remember as a small child going to drive-ins. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, and I used to love to go to the drive-in movies. Man, when you went to the drive-in, you were in your car, and, and our parents, you know, back in the day, people, they knew how to be frugal, and so uh, mama would pack a picnic basket. We'd have our drinks and whatever else that we needed, and we would get there early, and on the, the parking lot of the drive-in, they always had a play area for kids, and so we would play for a while, and when it was time for the movie to start we would all jump in the cars man and we would relax and kick back so join us here on saturdays for our drive-in services drive through for your breakthrough we'll get your bibles we're going to first john not the gospel according to john but the epistle of john first john first john chapter number four in first john chapter four Beginning at verse 15, we find these words written. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Again, that, that 18th verse, the word of God says, and this is going to be our focal point, our key verse. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And if I could just share a little bit uh, with you this afternoon, I'm going to share from the subject, No Longer Tormented. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus, recognizing you as the author and the finisher of our faith. We know that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. We know that you love us in the midst of all that is going on. We can rest upon your sure mercies. And I pray now that you would touch our hearts, our ears, our minds. Bless us to be receptive to thy word. I pray, Lord, that you would bless each of us that would hear this message to go forth being a doer of the word, not a hearer only, lest we deceive our own selves. Now, but God, we bind every spirit of distraction, interference, and disruption. I pray that your word will have its free course. And now bless this, your servant. Give me a greater anointing of the Holy Ghost. Speak to me and speak through me. Lord, use me as an instrument of faith. And for all this, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, again, come on, grab your family, grab your friends, and call somebody up. Just tell them we're on right now. We're on live so you can join us for drive through for your breakthrough. And I'm just, just so glad. I'm excited that you're here with us. Uh, on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Man, it's just gorgeous here in Pulaski. And I just thank God. When you really understand the beauty of God, I see God everywhere I look. I know we live in a very skeptical world. There's a lot of people who just don't believe in the goodness of God. But when I breathe this fresh air and I hear the, 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 the birds singing and, and us being outside, uh, sometimes it might seem like a challenge, but I'm grateful that God has allowed us to be outside just to behold the beauty of his creation. Man, I look at the trees and they seem to be waving and praising God. The birds are, are whistling. They're singing. They're praising God. And all of you here for drive through, why don't y'all give God a praise on your horn right now? You know, the, the enemy, the enemy, the adversary, and, and, and let me tell you, uh, husbands and wives, your spouse is not your enemy. The Bible says our adversary, the devil. So the devil, that's my enemy. Uh, because people don't like me, don't like you, that doesn't make them our enemy. Uh, but our enemy, the adversary, the word of God says, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so the enemy, because of all the, the, uh, uh, the protocols that's in place right now, thought he could lock us out, freeze us out of our praise and our worship, thought we wouldn't be able to gather together as an assembly. But, but the same 
saints of God, we know how to be adaptive. We know how to be creative. When one thing doesn't work, we do something different. And our message won't change. Our method has been slightly altered. But I'm glad that we still know how to come together. Even if it's on Facebook, if it's on computer, I will use whatever means necessary to get the word of God out. Because this world is in trouble. This world needs a savior who is able to turn things around. The catastrophic events that have rocked this world in recent days have taught many religious people, please get this in your spirit, that church is not a building, neither is it an organization, but it is an organism that happens to be organized. And I'm so glad that you can shut this building down, but you can't shut God down. We can uh, be forced to stay at home and, and, and not be able to embrace one another. And we, listen, we're a ministry of love. We, we just enjoy hugging on each other. We love on each other. Man, every Sunday we make people get up, go around, find people who didn't come with you, hug them and say, I love you. Well, I can't be with you in your living room or those of you in your cars, but know this, I still love you. I thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for those on the parking lot. Thank God for those who are watching by way of Facebook or YouTube. We love you with the love of Jesus. We are so much more than these buildings, so much more than programs, so much more than synchronized assemblies. Uh, yeah, we ought to faithfully go to church. Praise the Lord. That Listen, don't you use this as an opportunity to be lazy. When the buildings open up again, you need to find your way to a house of worship. I know that the building is not church, but the word of God tells us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is. So when we have opportunity, now I don't know about anybody else, but Pastor Barnett can't wait until this thing is over and we can get back together. Man, I, I'm not like a lot of people. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I love our folks. I love them. Praise the Lord. There was an old uh, Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Well, I'm not calling nobody ugly, but I love the good, the bad, and the ugly. Praise the Lord. I'll be the ugly. Just love on me just the way I am. I'm just glad to be here. Uh, saints of God, I'm not talking about being religious. I'm talking about having relationship. See, see, religious people believe that church only takes place for a couple of hours on a Sunday morning. Or those of you who go to church on Saturday, we think that's church. Church is more than that. When you really are born again, you understand that it is a 24-7 365 or 366 in a leap year, 366 days of the year, 24-7, we are always in the church. I'm glad that, that be, the service may end, but church is never, ever, ever, ever going to end, and I'm grateful to God for that. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 4, the Apostle Paul taught us something, and I believe that this pandemic is, is helping many of us to mature as Christians. Uh, praise the Lord. I know that sounds a little bit uh, oxymoronic. It sounds like it makes no sense. But let me assure you that sometimes we have to go through adverse situations before we really, really know what God can do. We can talk about the goodness of God and God being a deliverer, God being a healer. But if you've never experienced that for yourself, can I submit to you that you're living on the testimony of other people? But when God has brought you out, Nobody can tell you anything differently. If anybody's ever been healed by God in a miraculous manner, you won't listen to people telling you that God doesn't heal. You might hear them, but you know it's not true. If you've ever had to lean on God to make a way for you, you didn't know where that next meal was coming from, listen to me, saints of God. I know what it is to struggle financially. I know what it is to attempt to be a good steward, but still you just didn't have enough money to make ends meet. All it takes is, is one incident. Well, look at the pandemic. And I've been preaching this for years in our ministry that the average American is 30 days away from being bankrupt. I don't care how good a steward you are. Nobody could have predicted that this thing was going to happen and just literally shut the world down. But God is still faithful. And when you know him for yourself, we're not worried about our next meal, where it's going to come from. If God did it for me back then, God's going to do it for me now. How many of y'all believe that? Hallelujah. Notice what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verses 8 and 9. Paul said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. I don't have to trip. I'm not stressing. I don't need a pill. I don't need a drink of alcohol. I don't need medical marijuana or anything else to calm my nerves. I'm resting on the promises of God. And when you know what God says, it takes the fear out of whatever you're going through. Paul says that we are perplexed, but I'm not in despair. It may be a tough situation, but I still got to praise. How many of y'all still got to praise? We may be shut in, but y'all still be praising God. 
You may not be able to go to work but still have a praise. Maybe you can't go to your favorite restaurant. You can't go to the movie theaters. All you baseball fans, there was no opening day pitch, but you can still have a praise. And I'm grateful. Paul says that we're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. I'm cast down, but I'm not destroyed. Those things that come against us may be frustrating. They might be irritating. They may cause us uh, to be sometimes overwhelmed and even feel bewildered. Sometimes we have to yield to the processing of God. Nothing happens to you accidentally. Can I just tell you today that this whole situation that not just you, not just your community, but every state, every nation, every continent, with the exception of Antarctica, at least I'm told, everybody's being impacted by this pandemic, but God is still good. God knew it was going to happen, and if you allow God, he will bring you out better than you went in. I pray and hope to God that we're not the same when this is over. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope that Christians, Christians, listen, we can't keep talking about the love of God, but yet we don't love people. We can't keep talking about uh, how good God is, but you are good to anybody. The word of God says, if you say you love God, but you hate your brother. Now, listen, don't get mad at Pastor Barnett. You got to get mad at God on this one. God says you're a liar and the truth isn't in you. How can you love God whom you've never seen and hate your brother whom you see daily? It's something about catastrophes that causes us to be a little bit more sensitive. We reach out to each other in troubled times. We need to do that before trouble comes. You need to check on your neighbor. Don't wait till there's a pandemic. Don't wait till there's a tornado, an earthquake, or something other, uh, some other catastrophic event. We ought to love each other at all times. When I study the word of God, there is really one true characteristic that identifies who we are. Watch this. Because some people think that we identify because we believe in speaking in tongues or we don't believe in speaking in tongues. Some people believe we're characterized because we're Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, Church of God in Christ, Assembly of God, Charismatic, or some other denomination. None of those things will identify you with being a Christian. Jesus said, by this shall men know that ye are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Brothers and sisters, the trying of our faith According to the word of God, worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting or lacking nothing. Great stories of triumph and victories are only birthed out of great trials and tribulations. We want to get up with big testimonies, but nobody wants to go through anything. We want to talk about the miraculous power of God, but we don't want to experience desperation. You know, Jesus said something interesting to his disciples one time. Uh, they, were, they were looking at Jesus. And thinking about all the sacrifices that they had made on behalf of the kingdom. And Jesus said, let me tell you something. Can I just paraphrase a little bit? Jesus said, nobody, nobody has left houses of land. Nobody's left mothers or fathers. Nobody's left all these things who shall not receive even more in this lifetime a hundredfold. Now, here, here's the part. We, we, we tend to cut it off right there. But Jesus says, with that, persecutions. Persecutions. In other words... Because we are saved, that means we're not going to experience some difficult times. But it does guarantee whatever I'm going through, I'm not going through it all by myself. When you know for yourself what God has done, you can shout in the midst of the fire. When you know that God is a, a, a God who will bring you out, a God who will strengthen you, a God who will keep you, you may have moments in which you feel inadequate. You may feel that, that you're impotent. You may feel as though I just can't make it. But because of what God says, you forget about all those things. I remind myself constantly, what did God say? I, I know what the news report says, but what did God say? I know what the doctor's report said, but what did the Lord have to say about this? I know what the bank account says, but I'm more interested in what did God say? Well, right now, everybody's waiting on the stimulus check. Come on, somebody. Waiting on the stimulus check. Uh, that stimulus check is designed to do exactly what it says. Can, can, can I just be real? It, it's really not intended for you to save. I know that sounds crazy. It's designed for you to take it and spend it. Now, now some of you didn't have much before, and you'll get that stimulus check. And if you aren't careful, you'll have even less afterward. You'll see that as a, a, a bell ringing for you to go out and, and to overextend yourself. Uh, we're worried about a stimulus check that comes from the federal government. And thank God for that. I'm not knocking that. Don't get it twisted. Some people need help right about here. That's okay. What I'm suggesting to you is that the Holy Ghost will be your stimulus. When you have him as your stimulus, what God gives, he will never take away. 
way. Aren't you glad that God doesn't give it just naturally right back? When I'm stimulated by God, whatever I'm going through, he makes me have more than enough. He's that kind of God. I like the way David said it. David said, my cup runs over. If you just get a little bit in your cup, it's going to be empty after a while. But when my cup runs over, everybody around me gets blessed. Everybody. Because my cup literally is running over. I was asking God about our service today, seeking him for a message, a word that would be relevant, a word that would strengthen people, that would encourage people, uh, that would build up not only the believer, but a word that would introduce him to those who don't believe. Uh, and I believe that many people just don't believe in him, don't serve him because they don't know how much he loves them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They, they just don't have a clue as to how much God really loves you, regardless as to what you might have done. And, and we all came out of something. Quit, quit acting like your mess was better than your neighbor's mess. Can, can I say this? You know, if I was at the Praise and Worship Center on a Sunday morning, I would say that your steak is, is just as smelly as your neighbor's steak. Don't, don't think somehow yours is fresh and, and fragrant. It's fragrant, but it's a bad smelling fragrance. We have to understand that God sent Jesus to deliver all of us out of something. He loves us more than our drug addiction. He loves you beyond your promiscuity. He loves you in spite of your unfaithfulness. God loves you knowing this. And this is the part that really blows my mind. He knew because you have to remember he's omniscient. He's at Tiyom. He knows the end from the beginning. He knew that even after I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, that I would do some stumbling and falling. God knew that. He knew that I would yet be imperfect, but he still loved me just the same. He knew that the accusation that Satan was making about you and me, God knew all that was true. And what I love about God, he said, yeah, but I love him anyway. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I, I thought about this, this thing we're going through, and I prayed and I sought the face of God, and God spoke to me, spoke to my heart about the horrific impact that this pandemic has had upon the world. Not because of uh, the soaring numbers and report of uh, those who have been infected uh, by the virus and every day you turn the news on that number just gets higher and higher. Uh, not because there have been many people, thousands of people, almost 30,000 people have lost their lives uh, due to some COVID related situation uh, that, that really wasn't where God was taking me. Uh, not because people are afraid of the economic impact that it's having around the world. It's already being bandied about and theorized that we're going to experience the worst reception, perhaps even in history. But I'm not worried about that because God is still God. If God kept me in good times, he will keep me in negative times. Well, what God began to point out to me was the fact that fear was involved. Fear. Are you hearing what I'm saying this afternoon? It is our unfamiliarity with this disease. We, we don't really understand it. We don't understand how to, to stop it from occurring. We don't really know how to properly treat it. We don't really know how to cure it. And things that people don't really know, they have a tendency to be afraid of. Fear, I can speak of fear as a person. I'm gonna make some sense to you in just a minute if you just hold on. We don't have a clue as to how to eradicate this disease. And, and so we're, we're, we're practicing, and I want to encourage you to continue to practice the protocol of social distancing. That doesn't mean you're afraid of anything. It means you have a little wisdom. Uh, how many of you understand if somebody's got the flu, you don't want them coughing all over you, and you don't want to cough all over them. We were doing that, I hope, before COVID-19 was ever discovered or talked about. There's some things that just make sense, but I found out a long time ago that common sense is not all that common. We don't need somebody to tell us to wash our hands. You should have been doing that all along. How many of y'all had old school parents my mother would knock you out of that chair if you sat at her table and you didn't go in and wash your hands first. That was just basic business. We need to get back to basics in the first place. Fear is a spirit behind what we don't understand. It's not just the COVID-19. It's the fear of what we simply don't know. By now, I'm sure that you're wondering and asking yourself, what in the world is Pastor Barnett really talking about? And why is he talking about fear as though it is an entity. Well, let me talk about fear. Fear as a noun is an unpleasant or strong emotion caused by anticipation. It hadn't even happened, but we anticipate it's going to happen or an awareness of what might happen. That's what fear is. 
Fear is an emotion that's induced by perceived or imagined danger or threat. When we feel threatened by something, immediately fear takes over. Uh, I, I won't call uh, one of my, my kids' names, one of my daughter's name. Uh, she was at work one day, and I went to her job, and uh, a mouse scurried across the floor. And I said, look, there's a mouse. And I was pretty calm about it, nonchalant. The next thing I know, she's screaming and jumping up on the counter. Can I submit to you that that was fear? Fear induced and irrational behavior. The mouse only weighs an ounce. Have you ever read stories about a person being taken out by a killer mouse? It's just the mouse. But it, it causes people, and, and, and brothers, don't start laughing at the women. I know some men who are terrified of mice. Uh, I got a good friend. He doesn't care whether that mouse is alive or dead. He will send his wife to collect the mouse. Fear is irrational. But it causes a physiological and a behavioral change in us. We begin to uh, produce an illogical reaction to what is going on. In, in other words, it's not that big a deal, but, but fear causes us to operate by panic. That's, that's the reason why when you're in school, you have fire drills and they tell you don't run, but walk. If you go to a, a public place of entertainment, uh, ordinarily they will point out the various exits that's in the place. And that's just in case of a fire. And they say in case of an actual emergency, walk, don't run. Because people will get panicked. They've had fires where they've discovered people who had died not because of the fire, but because they had been trampled to death by a panicky crowd. Well, we're not cattle. Uh, cattle will stampede and they will run not knowing why they're running or where they're running to. Now, now growing up in the city, uh, th there's a flight of fight or flight response. And if you were in my neighborhood and you saw 10 guys running, you didn't even ask what was going on. You took off and started running. And, and they may have been running for exercise. You didn't even ask. They were just out jogging. But fear gripped you and it motivated you. It caused a behavioral change in how you ordinarily would react. Th that's what fear is. It causes us to have an illogical response. In some cases, fear can be so intense and terrorizing until it creates paralyzing effects. It's crippling. It causes people to freeze. Their response, rather than, than reacting or responding, they simply freeze. You can't run, you can't shout, you can't scream, you can't move, you don't know what to do because fear has gripped you. My mother was, when I was a little boy, around four or five, I fell and, and, and really uh, and suffered a severe cut in my hand, bleeding all over the place. Had my uncle not been there, I would have bled to death. My mother, she was horrified, terrified, and could not react because of fear. My uncle immediately grabbed me, picked me up, and began to administer some emergency first aid. Fear will cause you to be unable to produce an appropriate response to what it is that you're going through. In essence, fear is a spiritual terrorist that will hold you hostage. But God sent me to encourage you and to strengthen you to be of good cheer. In the gospel according to John, John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Now watch what he says. Jesus says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Brothers and sisters, because we have been washed in the blood of Jesus, he abides in us and we abide in him. And because of that, we ought to act like Jesus. If Jesus is not tripping, why are you tripping? If Jesus is not afraid, why are you afraid? When the apostles were afraid because they were on the ship, it was being tossed to and fro. We find that Jesus was asleep in the hull of the ship. And they went and they woke Jesus up and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Listen, when you saved and sanctified and your Holy Ghost filled, you can see hell all around you, but you're still calm, still cool, and still collected. I want to encourage you to know that Jesus is operating on the inside, and because he's on the inside of you, he will affect you so that your outward response is appropriate to the situation. Rather than us screaming and crying and putting our hair out, we're still praising, we're still shouting, we're still dancing. How many of y'all got to praise in the midst of this pandemic? Oh, that's right. Put those hands together. 
give God a round of praise. Hallelujah. The devil thought he had us shut down, thought he had us quiet, but my praise intensified. Every now and then you got to pump up the volume. I wish they had somebody here who could understand that. I listen to young people, and young people, I'm concerned. Some of y'all bumping your music in your car so loud, I'm afraid that when you get to be my age, you won't be able to hear anything at all. And sometimes when you look at them, anybody ever look at somebody that was bumping that music? They don't turn it down. They pump it up a little louder. Every now and then we need to pump up the volume on the devil. When Paul and Silas were in the prison, the Bible says at midnight. Now, I don't know who prayed. I don't know who sang. But they began to have a praise service right in the jail cell. And they began to sing so loud until all of the prisoners heard them singing. And at midnight, God rocked the jailhouse. I know y'all thought Elvis did jailhouse rock. But let me tell you, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was already rocking the jailhouse. I might be shut in, but baby, I'm shut in with Jesus. I'm still rocking and rolling with the rock of ages. I want you to understand that our adversary doesn't have the power to intimidate us without our permission. Hallelujah. We're overcomers. In the book of Revelation, the word of God says that uh, Jesus, over. listen, we overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. We testify in the face of the enemy that God is still able. In the midst of this pandemic, God is still able. You might be sick, but God is still able. I'm glad that he's still on the throne and he is still God. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many of you know that you're the redeemed of the Lord? Hallelujah. That's right. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. And I don't have to worry. I don't have to be afraid. I'm not paralyzed. It is the Lord who fights for me. And so God sent me to tell you that you no longer have to be tormented. That, that's how I thought this afternoon. I'm no longer tormented. Regardless as to what the catalyst might be, I refuse to be tormented by the facts around me or by what I'm going through. God's record is intact. God is undefeated. Not only is he undefeated, can I just make up a word? God is undefeatable. See, people are only undefeated until somebody comes along and beats them. But when you are undefeatable, that means that nobody can come along and take you down. Down. You can't take God down. You might be able to take this physical body down, but you'll never take the Jesus in me down. You can take the bank account down, but you can't take Jesus down. You may be able to lock us out of the church building, but baby, you can never take us down as long as we stay in Christ Jesus. He is El Shaddai. El Shaddai is the almighty God, and I'm glad that I know him for myself. That's the God that we serve. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. I want you to understand this afternoon that the adversary, the devil, has used this pandemic to terrorize the world. He has worked overtime. You hear what I'm telling you? He's worked overtime creating a state of panic, paralysis, and irrational reactions out of human beings. That, that's why people are just still still swarming at the stores. My wife and I thought we would get up and, and, and be uh, uh, proactive this week. Uh, you know, many stores now have an hour that they set aside for senior citizens. Uh, that, that's one of the benefits of, of being a senior citizen now. You know, I kind of fought that thing, had to get vanity aside. Well, if you're a senior citizen, some stores, the first hour that they're open, they use that for the seniors. So we just decided this week, I needed to get something from my mom and, 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 and my, my dad and his wife, my stepmother, and, and we got up early. Man, we got up before the store opened up. We were the first cars on the lot and went in there. And, and how many of you understand that when people panic, even if they open a store early, whatever it is you thought you were going to get, you ain't getting that. And so we got up early and we thought, well, it's not a wasted day because it's still the day that God has made. People are buying things that they will never use. That's panic. People are afraid of one another. And yes, we are to practice social distancing. That's simply wise. But don't be afraid to love on somebody. Uh, you can't catch it by waving at somebody. You can't catch it being nice. You can't catch it dropping off food for somebody that might be in need. Be a blessing to somebody. Don't use this as an excuse to be selfish. If anything, learn how to give more than you ever have. There's a plethora of ways by which we can give. Let me go to the text real quick. In 1 John, uh, I'm not going to read the whole text, but I'm going to go to verses 17 through 19. When you're grounded in Christ, you don't have to be tormented. Verse 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. 
Because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love. And this is what I want you to get. The Bible says perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now I love verse 19. Verse 19 says we love him because he first loved us. Let me give you a few points. And I promise you we're not going to be any longer than necessary. First of all, our love can only be perfected in Christ Jesus. Without him, all we have is a semblance of love that's based upon custom, tradition, and the standards of this world. But God's love is out of this world. It takes the love of God to see beyond our faults and address every need that we have. It is the love of God that can see you being a complete and utter mess and say, I love you anyway. It's only the love of God that has the power to transform a gangbanger, a thug, a prostitute, or any other negative thing into an evangelist, a pastor, a preacher, or a teacher. That's love. It's love that can go behind prison walls and say, listen, I know you're doing a life sentence, but I still love you. You may never be free by men, but you can be free in Christ Jesus. And whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. That, that's love. It took love to go to the cross of Calvary. It took love to be persecuted. It took love to wear a crown of thorns. It took love that, that died or gave up the ghost in the ninth hour and then spent three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, but then get up on the third day morning decreeing and declaring. I've got all power in my hands. But, but secondly, the phenomenal love of God provokes a boldness in us that the world can't understand. Hallelujah. When you understand the love of God, it will mess your enemies up. It confuses the adversary because they know that you know that they're working overtime to bring you down. They besmirch your reputation. They're on Facebook slamming you, dogging you out. People are lying on you, criticizing you. The antagonists come out of the, the woodworks. All your haters show up all at the same time. And what they don't understand about the love of God, I still love them anyway. Love will make you love your enemies. Love will make you love that person who's cursing you out. Quit reacting to people who are flipping you off or giving you that one-digit wave uh, when you're in your car and they cut you off. Don't react. Don't respond in kind. Just love them. I have a saying that I've relied upon over the years. There are some people you have to love the hell out of them. Now, I know some of you with religiously sensitive ears, you're going, oh, my God, the preacher cussed. No, I'm not cussing. People, some people are full of hell, and it takes love to get hell out of them. So we listen love the hell out of our enemies. The more they act crazy, the more we love on them. The more they work against us, the more you help them. The word of God says, listen, and say to God, please get this in your spirit. Quit being offended and upset because somebody lied on you. Somebody did something mean to you. Well, Pastor Barnett, I know they did it. I heard them. You may be absolutely correct. But watch what Jesus says. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. When men shall say all oh, manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. When they love on, hate on you because you love Jesus, that's simply an indication that you're going closer and closer to Christ. When people are confused by your love and your praise, it's simply because they don't understand the love of Christ Jesus. We become like him when we love like him. But, but then number three. When you accept and embrace the love of God, it creates a spiritual metamorphic process that literally changes your entire identity. Yeah, my, my face looks the same. My hands look the same. Uh, when I first got saved back in the day, people would sing this old song, looked at my hands, my hands look new, looked at my feet, and they did too. Well, I had the same old ugly hands, had the same old ugly feet. My face didn't change. My hair didn't get short, didn't grow. I was the same size. Nothing about my physical stature changed. But everybody who saw me after I got saved recognized the change in me. I didn't have to tell people anything. There's something about the Spirit of God. When it indwells the believer, it transforms you the way I used to think. I don't think like that anymore. What used to upset me no longer has the power to upset me. Some of you have too many buttons. Can I tell you, take all of your buttons, put them in a drawer, and let God handle them. If you could try to take care of all of your problems and learn to lean on Jesus, you have more joy and more peace. When you get saved for real, you're not trying to figure out, how can I get even with somebody because of what they did to me. I might remember that, but it doesn't have the power to make me mad anymore. Oh, I wish I had somebody who would embrace that. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. When you have been changed like Jesus, now watch this because some of y'all trying to be like you. I've heard Christians get up and testify, don't make the old me come out of you. I used to hear that all the time and I started thinking, wait a minute, the old you is supposed to be gone. The Bible says, when we accept Jesus, behold, all things are become new. There is no old me. Now, if you want the old me, you're going to have to go find some old high school yearbooks. You're going to have to reminisce, take a trip down memory lane because the old me no longer exists. I became a brand new creature in Christ. Why in the world would I ever want to go back and resurrect the old me? The old me was on his way to hell. Quit trying to be the old you. Now, now wait a minute because the old school says, you, they'll say this, you'll make me lay my religion down. See, that's the problem. You got religion and you didn't get relationship. When you get relationship, you never want to lay relationship down. I've been married to my beautiful wife. It's going to be 40 years in May. 40 years to the same woman. Love her to no end. I don't want to lay my relationship down with her now. Praise the Lord. I'm like the disciples when Jesus asked them, are you going to walk away too? Uh, Peter said, uh, where are we going to go? You're the bread of life. Uh, after 40 years, where in the world would Pastor Barnett go? At this point, nobody wants me but Sister Carol, and I'm glad that she still wants me. Praise the Lord. When you have been transformed, you begin to talk like him. What, well, Pastor, what do you mean? When you speak like God, you speak those things that are not as though they are. God framed the whole world. Go back and read Hebrews. He framed this whole world by his words. And so we begin to frame our lives in the midst of this pandemic. I don't care what you're going through. Begin framing your world by the words that God speaks. No, 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 no. Don't, don't use that, that earthly language. Use the heavenly language. Use the language of God. Speak about it the way God speaks over it. Speak over your children. Speak over your husband. Speak over your wife. Speak over your finances, your health. Even over this pandemic, saints of God, we should have been rebuking this thing when it first came out. We don't need to wait until the numbers begin to soar or somebody in our family gets sick or we get sick with it. We should have already been speaking life and not death. We know what the numbers are, but we are still speaking life. Jesus is the bread of life. He's not the bread of death. We've got to speak life in the midst of all of this. When, when you begin to speak like God, you impact and you change the atmosphere around you. Hallelujah. How many of you found out on your job? When you stop participating in uh, ungodly conversations around the water cooler and you start speaking the things of God, it changes the atmosphere. You don't have to go in quoting scripture. Just speak love to people. Speak life into people. Everybody's not going to remember the scriptures you quote, but they will remember how you treat them. If I treat you like Jesus, it is because he has transformed me. I don't treat you the way my flesh wants to treat you. I treat you the way God would have me to treat you. Jesus says, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. We, we knew that before we ever got saved. In the public schools that, that I grew up in, in Chicago, Illinois, they always said, remember the golden rule. I didn't even know where the golden rule came from. But when I got saved and I read it in the word of God and I began to allow Jesus to transform me from the inside out, it impacted and affected the way I treat people. So you know how to treat people when you get saved. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, we have to be saved all the time. Don't treat people godly because you're in church. What about when you get outside of church? When you see them at the mall, when you see them on the job or in the community, you see them on the side of the road, you ought to be the same sanctified Christian that you were on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. When you act like Jesus, the devil can't terrorize you. When you act like the Lord, COVID-19 can no longer torment you. The things that are happening around us might be upsetting to those who don't know the Lord, but look at your neighbor, look at your brother, tell him, I'm no longer tormented. Yeah, we were concerned. Praise the Lord. When this thing first started blowing up, man, we were concerned. And when we found out that it had reached the shores of the United States, your concern grew by leaps and bounds. When you discovered that it happened in your city, fear began to take over. When you discovered not only did it happen in your city, but you found out it was in your county, you found out even further than that, people on your job had it. You discovered you couldn't go to the hospitals or nursing homes. You can't go to any place like that. All of a sudden now, the level of fear that you had in you, it began to grow exponentially to the point of you being tormented. Your tormentor has no power over you. You have to understand that torment is the offspring of fear. Let me say that again. Torment is the offspring of fear. Well, Pastor, what are you saying? See, see when we talk about torment, we're, we're talking about 
a noun, but it, it can also be an action word. But when I talk about fear, I'm speaking of fear as an entity. Can I prove to you real quick that, that speak, fear is an entity? In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the word of God says, but God has not given us the spirit of fear. That, 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 that's a being. That's a being. Praise the Lord, somebody. I, I need to go back and teach just a little bit because when you understand being tormented, that word torment really, uh, there's a Greek word called phobos. And phobos, the etymology of phobia comes from that Greek word phobos. Phobos is that irrational fear. It causes an illogical reaction in you. That's what phobias are. Phobias really don't make sense. It's like people who have a fear of clowns. You maybe never encountered a clown, then never stepped on your foot, never hurt you you but you, for whatever reason that clown terrifies you there's some people who are scared of, of the number 13 it's just another number but some people are afraid of that and some old buildings they don't have a 13th floor next time you go to a big skyscraper notice when you look at the little keypad many of those old buildings they just skip the 13th floor because people have an irrational fear of the number 13 we know there's nothing wrong or, or nothing to be afraid about I, I promise you if you give me thirteen thousand dollars I ain't scared Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm glad I got a witness. Praise the Lord. No, no, don't act like you. If you're afraid, you make sure when you get to 13,000, give that to Pastor Barnett. Give it to the Praise and Worship Center Ministries. Praise the Lord. Donate it to our orphanage in East Africa. If 13 is bothering you, I'll take all your 13s you got. It's an irrational fear. That's a phobia. And so the Bible says that God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Watch what he says. But a power, love, and of a sound mind. I get powerful in the face of tormenting situations and predicaments. The more intense the devil turns up the heat, the more intense my praise becomes, the more he challenges me, the more he fights me, the more emboldened I become. Some of y'all gotta learn how to get angry, not at your neighbor, just get mad at the devil. How many of y'all know when you get upset with something, you draw that line in the sand and, and you make your declaration, I've had enough of this, enough is enough. And now, amen, praise the Lord. Now you're ready to go into the enemy's camp, no longer afraid, but I'm going with a holy boldness and I let the adversary know, devil, you may have run me last week, but you're not running me today. I might have been afraid when I first heard COVID-19. I refuse to be tormented. Perfect love cast out all fear. Your tormentor might have been cancer, but God has canceled your fear. He instilled Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord God that heals you. You may be tormented by lack of financial or finances, but I came to tell you, he is still Jehovah Jireh. He's the God who provides. Why are you afraid? When he said, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. I want you to understand something. Maybe your family is dysfunctional. Maybe you and your wife are headed to divorce court. Don't be tormented. Don't be afraid. His name is Excellent Counselor. Listen, if you need counseling, go to Jesus. He can tell you what man doesn't understand. He can fix whatever your problems are. He is Mr. Fix-It. I want somebody to understand you don't have a problem that's greater than your God. You don't have to walk in fear. You don't have to be tormented. I might have been concerned. I might have even been worried, but I found out a long time ago. Let me tell you something. If you're going to pray, stop worrying. If you're going to worry, don't bother about praying. You can't do the both. You can't be both frightened and faithful at the same time. Faith will cancel out fear. It will cancel out your tormentor. That's the reason why we get bold. I feel like the Apostle Paul. Paul said, I fought a good fight in the midst of COVID-19. We ought to be fighting a good fight in the midst of whatever you're going through, fight a good fight. You may have broken relationships. Don't be tormented by that. Begin to give God praise. Learn how to give God glory. I might be going through, but I came to let somebody know I'm coming out of this cave better than I went in the cave. The church might be closed, but God is still open for business. You may not be able to come on Sunday morning to the praise and worship center, but you can still go to Jesus. You might be able to go to your doctor's office like you're used to going, but I came to let you know that God is on your side, and he will. God will. God will deliver you. It's praying time. I want to pray with you and pray for you. You no longer have to be tormented, not by suicidal thoughts, not by some physical ailment in your body, not by people around you who don't understand you. Maybe you don't even understand yourself, but dear hearts, I want you to know that God understands you. Listen, if you don't know Jesus, 
and I feel pressed in my spirit because somebody's watching this right now and you feel as though you have come to the end. You don't know how you're gonna make it. You've already had several family members who have lost their lives because of this pandemic or this virus. I want to encourage you. The word of God says he's a man of sorrow. He is acquainted with grief. We have these comforting words that weeping might endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Don't you dare take your life right now. Don't you dare take your life. You hold on to God's unchanging hand. Joy is coming in the morning. There's peace right now. Somebody else, I know you think you've messed up and that you no longer qualify for the kingdom of God. But the Lord's just impressed upon my spirit to tell you right now, you are just right, sir. You are just right for the kingdom of God. All is not lost. God is still on the throne and God still loves you. If you're not saved, I want to lead you a prayer. And if you will say these words from your heart, God's going to save you right now. You may not see lightning flashing. You may not hear thunder rolling. But the Lord is still going to change who you are. He's going to write your name in this book of life. It's going to change your identity. Say these simple words. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. A sinner lost and on my way to hell. I've messed up more than I've gotten it right stumbled and fallen more than I've walked upright. But I pray now, Lord, that you would save me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he raised him from the dead. I'm accepting you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my mouth and I confess, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I'm accepting you right now. I renounce Satan and sin. Lord, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, if you prayed that prayer, the angels in heaven, they're rejoicing right now. All of us here at the drive-in, drive-through for your breakthrough, we're rejoicing, we're excited because we have a new brother or sister in the family of God. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah. And I want to pray for the rest of us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you knowing that you are the great I am that I am. There's nothing that's too hard for you to do. I pray, Lord, that you bless that individual. Bless my sister, Father God, who's struggling with this COVID-19 virus in her body right now. On the ventilator. And I pray for Pat, Lord, that you would touch her. Lord, that you would work a miracle. It's going to take you to bring her out of this. But, Father God, we have resigned ourselves to the fact that you are still in control. And we trust you no matter what. I pray, Father, that you would bless her mom, that you would comfort and encourage her and her sisters. I pray, Lord, that you would bless her children and grandchildren. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, not only her, but Lord, all those who have been impacted by this virus, I pray for health, healing, and deliverance. I pray that you will bless those who are frontline workers, every doctor, every nurse, every orderly, every receptionist. Father, all those who have to work hand in hand, every CNA, oh God, every professional and paraprofessional, I pray that you will bless them, that you will cover them with your precious blood. I pray that you will bless Dr. Sheena and Dr. Antoine. Father God, keep them, strengthen them. I pray, Father, for those who are working tirelessly, Lord, and unselfish manners to bring about a cure, to bring about a vaccine that, Father, you will give them wisdom, show them what they've been missing all along. I pray, Father God, that you bless all of our first responders, Lord, who are the first ones on the scenes. I pray that you would keep them, strengthen them, bring them safely back to their families. Bless our political leaders, Lord, I pray that you would give them a mind not to use this for political gain, not to grandstand, but to do what's right by the people. And God, I pray for all the spiritual leaders. I pray for every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Father God, I pray for every saint of God. Lord, that you would give us wisdom to navigate these uncharted waters. Lord, that you would bless us and strengthen us. Help us to know, Lord, that because we may not be able to get into the building, that we're still able to have church. We're still able to enjoy one another. Still able to congregate, even if it's through Facebook or YouTube or whatever media platform that we can find for your honor and your glory. Now, God, I thank you, Lord, for those who have sacrificed, Lord, who laid their lives on the line to bring this service to the world. I pray that you will bless them. Bless our friends in East Africa. Bless them in Kenya. Bless them in Tanzania. Bless them in Uganda. Bless our family, Lord, in the Bahamas. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we submit to you. We pray your blessings, your peace. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We say that it is so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, if you would like to reach out to us, Hallelujah. God bless you. 
you can contact us by dropping us a line in the mail. We want to hear from you. You can also message us. We want to pray for you. Uh, praise the Lord. We'll, we'll respond to you personally, but you can reach us. Our mailing address, post office box, 226 Pulaski, Illinois, 62976. St. John Praise and Worship Center Ministries, P.O. Box 226 Pulaski, Illinois, 62976. Also, you can reach us by email, sjpwc371 at gmail.com. That's sjpwc371 at gmail.com. Well, if you would like to be a financial blessing to this ministry, and we, again, are a ministry of integrity, we utilize money the way the people of God want us to utilize their funds. We believe that's very important. So uh, you can write that on the memo section of your check, mail it to our mailing address, or you can give by texting. It's safe, it's easy, it's secure, it's fast. Text GIVE, the number 618-414-3434. That's 618-414-3434. And the dialogue box indicate how you want that money distributed, and we will follow your wishes and your desires. If you would like to drop your financial contributions off at the church, there will be officers here between the hours of 11 and 12 o'clock. Again, the physical address is 371 Chestnut, Pulaski, Illinois. Again, and as always, stay blessed by the blessed. We love you. We want you to join us again. Join us again on next Saturday. Saturday, drive through for your breakthrough. I'm going to be putting up another, uh, hopefully things will go well, another live Bible study Wednesday. I'm trying to be on at 6 o'clock. So look for us Wednesday at 6 o'clock, our Bible study. And I just go wherever the Lord tells me to, to sit up and record the Bible study. It's going to be a blessing to you and your family. Stay blessed by the blessed. We love you. God bless you. God keep you. God bless you. Drive through crowd. God bless you. Pastor loves you. God bless you.